I refuse to pay for my sister's expensive wedding after our parents said they couldn't afford it, and because of that, my whole family turned against me. Later, my sister showed up at my door, which led to a confrontation. I'm a 31-year-old mobile developer who earns a lot more than anyone else in my family. My mom is a retired piano teacher, and my dad runs a visual merchandising store. My younger sister, Amy, who is 27, and I haven't spoken in three years. This is mainly because of her difficult and entitled attitude, which has been a problem since we were kids, but was never addressed by our parents. For years ago, the gap between us grew worse during a Christmas dinner I hosted at my new apartment. I wanted it to be a special occasion, but Amy criticized the size and style of my home and bragged about her wealthy boyfriend's huge estate. I couldn't take it anymore, so I told her that, unlike her boyfriend, I was supporting myself, and if she didn't like my place, she could leave. Amy and her boyfriend stormed out, and we haven't spoken since. Even though our parents have tried to get us to make up, I've chosen to keep my distance from her. Recently, I found out that Amy got engaged to the same boyfriend from that Christmas dinner and was planning a very expensive wedding. Our parents, maybe not thinking it through, promised to pay for the pricey venue and decorations, trying to compete with the groom's rich parents. But they soon realized they couldn't afford it, so they came to me asking for a loan. I remembered how they refused to help me with my college costs, saying I had to be financially independent after I turned 18, so I said no. Now, some relatives think I'm being petty, but I feel justified given the situation and how they pushed me to be financially independent in the past. I'm looking for advice on whether my position is fair or if I'm really being petty, like some of my family members think. The costs were incredibly high, and no matter how hard I worked, I couldn't cover them. I suggested taking out a student loan, but my parents were strongly against it. They were even more shocked when I mentioned borrowing money from relatives, saying it went against their principles. Despite many arguments, they refused to budge. In the end, my grandparents stepped in and helped me get a loan, allowing me to go to college. During that time, I was really frustrated with my parents, though I eventually forgave them. However, I haven't completely forgotten their strong views on borrowing money. My sister, on the other hand, avoided these financial struggles altogether by deciding not to go to college. Her plan was to inherit our father's business or marry, which is what she's doing now. As she plans her expensive wedding, it seems my parents have conveniently forgotten their stance on borrowing money because they came to me for financial help. I couldn't help but remind them of their previous refusal to support loans. They were shocked, clearly not expecting me to remember their words so well. After our conversation, several relatives reached out to me, saying I had embarrassed my parents. According to them, my financial success had changed me, and now I was looking down on my parents. I thought these accusations were unfair. All I had done was stand up against what I saw as hypocrisy. Because of this, I chose to distance myself from my parents and the relatives who didn't understand my side. I stayed out of my sister's wedding preparations entirely. Recently, my parents visited me again, upset because they had been uninvited for my sister's wedding. I was shocked since I hadn't spoken to her. They told me that when they admitted to her and her in-laws that they couldn't fully fund the wedding, things got complicated. This unexpected situation has made me feel even more distant from my family, but I still believe I didn't do anything wrong. My sister lost her temper and started pressuring them to find a way to get the money. She didn't want to ask her in-laws for help because that would make her and our family look bad. I understood her point if my parents weren't sure they could afford the wedding, they shouldn't have promised to cover it in the first place. While my sister can often act spoiled and entitled, I don't think she was wrong here. In my opinion, she and her fiancé should have taken on the full cost themselves since his family could easily afford it. However, if my parents made a commitment, they should follow through with it. My sister was right that asking her in-laws for money would make our family look bad, so she had every reason to be upset, and I supported her decision. I explained to my parents that I had nothing to do with their choice to make promises they might not be able to keep. They created this situation themselves, and there was no one else to blame. At this point, I think my sister uninviting them from the wedding was a bit extreme, but honestly, what did they expect from Amy? She's always been like this, and they're the ones responsible for handling her behavior, not me. Despite my explanation, my parents didn't accept it. 
They kept saying that if I had just helped by lending them some money instead of holding on to past grudges, we wouldn't be in this mess. I felt it was really unfair for them to blame me, so I told them to leave. They left, but they kept dragging me into the situation, and now the whole family has turned against me, calling me selfish and heartless. Personally, I don't think I've done anything wrong. I stand by my decision not to pay for my sister's wedding, especially since my parents can't afford it. Recently, I decided to cut off all contact with my entire family. It's unbelievable how both my mom's and dad's sides of the family have united against me. The only exception is my grandparents. My mom's parents have passed away, but my dad's parents still support me. They've been trying to keep the peace in the family, but even they're getting tired of all the drama. Everyone in the family has had disagreements before, but their dislike for me has brought them together in a way I didn't expect. At least I'm thankful I could do something positive for the family, even though I've now blocked everyone else to avoid more drama. Someone commented that the real reason everyone dislikes me so much is probably because they're jealous. I think that's a fair point. I don't mean to sound arrogant, but I'm doing much better than most of my family members and I don't think they can handle it. Growing up, I never really listened to anyone's advice. Most of my family told me I should get a business degree and take over my dad's store because they thought that was the best future for me instead of spending so much time on the computer. But here I am making my living from computers, and I'm a lot more successful than most of my cousins. Not only are they jealous of me, but their parents seem to resent me too. I don't understand it because I believe families should celebrate each other's successes and share in the happiness. But that's never been the case with my family. It makes me sad sometimes, but I know I can't change how other people act. I bet my parents are enjoying the fact that everyone is against me right now because, in their eyes, I'm the one who got them uninvited for my sister's wedding. We haven't spoken since they last came over, accusing me of ruining their relationship with my sister, which still doesn't make sense to me. My grandparents told me they aren't speaking to my parents either, because they're on my side. It just shows how ungrateful my parents are since my grandparents have helped them so many times in the past, but they don't seem to remember that. Honestly, I'm kind of glad I didn't help them when they asked for my support. In the end, I believe that keeping peace and doing what's best for myself is more important than holding on to a toxic family dynamic. It's a hard decision, but I know it's the right one for my well-being and future. Yesterday was quite an eventful day for me. I was swamped with work and didn't have a chance to share what happened here. Something unexpected happened after I got home. Amy, my sister who I hadn't spoken to in three years, came to visit me. This was surprising because we haven't had a good relationship and hadn't been in touch for a long time. When she arrived about an hour after I got home, I was really taken aback, given everything that had happened between us. I assumed she might want to talk about her wedding plans, especially since our parents weren't invited. I thought maybe she needed financial help. But to my surprise, Amy didn't start the conversation like that. Instead, she came with an apology for her past behavior. She told me she was starting a new chapter in her life with her upcoming marriage and before inviting anyone else, she wanted to formally invite me to her wedding. She apologized for how she had acted in the past, admitting that she had been difficult and that she regretted her behavior. Amy also mentioned that our parents never corrected her behavior when we were younger, so she grew up thinking it was okay to act that way. She was acting more mature now, realizing that in the past, she had been wrong and wanted to fix her relationships, starting with me. As I listened, I felt a mix of emotions. On one hand, I was happy that she came to apologize and take responsibility for her actions. On the other hand, I was cautious, sensing that there might be more to her visit. After finishing her heartfelt apology, I told her that I appreciated it and was glad she recognized her mistakes. But I could tell she wasn't finished yet, so I waited for what she had to say next. As expected, Amy went deeper into the situation. She mentioned that she knew our parents had been hard on me too. She had heard from other family members that they thought I was selfish and heartless for not helping with her wedding expenses. Amy tried to defend me, saying I was right to stand my ground since our parents hadn't supported me financially after I turned 17. She explained that our parents had promised to help her with the wedding, but now they were unable to pay for anything. 
This left Amy feeling embarrassed and in a tough financial spot. At this point, Amy made her real request. She asked if I could lend her the money for the wedding, promising to pay it back by the end of the year. She even offered to sign a contract to make the agreement official, showing how serious she was about returning the money. Her offer to put everything in writing made her request seem more genuine and trustworthy. Despite her promises, I knew I needed time to think about it. Even though she had apologized, our relationship was still rocky, and I wasn't sure if I was ready to trust her again. I hoped she would understand my hesitation, but Amy didn't take it well. She got upset, accusing me of being unreasonable and saying she wasn't asking for much. In the end, I decided not to rush into a decision. While I appreciated her apology and could see she was trying to make things right, I needed to think about our past and whether helping her financially was the best choice. Our relationship had been strained for years, and her request brought up a lot of old feelings and unresolved issues. Looking back on the day, I realized that sometimes people need to face their past actions and seek forgiveness to move forward. Amy's visit was a big step for her, showing that she wanted to change and rebuild relationships. Whether I choose to help her or not, her willingness to apologize and reach out was an important moment for both of us. As I continued to think about what happened, I hoped that this encounter could lead to a better understanding between us. Rebuilding trust won't happen quickly, but Amy's gesture was a start. Only time will tell how our relationship changes from here, but for now, I'm thankful that she took the step to apologize and seek reconciliation. For the last three years, Amy and I had no relationship at all. We didn't talk, didn't see each other, and our sibling bond was completely broken. So, when she decided to visit me out of the blue, it felt both surprising and suspicious. I couldn't shake the feeling that she wasn't really there to reconnect, but had another reason maybe to ask for money. Deep down, I doubted her apology was sincere. When Amy arrived at my house, I could tell something was off. Instead of starting with an apology, she acted just like our parents selfish and only thinking about herself. Frustrated by her behavior, I couldn't hold back any longer. I told her she was just like our parents, always looking out for herself. As expected, she got angry and started yelling at me, but I wasn't going to tolerate that kind of behavior anymore. Unlike our parents, who always expect things from us, I decided to stand my ground. I firmly told her to leave my house, making it clear that I wouldn't accept her actions. At first, Amy refused to go, insisting she wasn't finished talking. In a moment of frustration, I grabbed her arm and pushed her out of my home. She threatened to call the police, saying I had attacked her, but I didn't care. Eventually, she left. Although I was really angry for a while, looking back now, it almost seems funny, and I've moved on. A couple of weeks passed after that intense argument, and I figured that any invitation Amy might have given me was now off the table. But today, something surprising happened I received an invitation to her wedding. This unexpected gesture left me confused and unsure about what to think. Was she serious about fixing our relationship, or was there another hidden reason? Feeling uneasy, I decided to reach out to her for some clarity. At first, she didn't respond to my messages, which made me wonder if the invitation was even real. After a few hours, she finally called me back. Her tone was short and not very friendly, but I thanked her for the invitation anyway, hoping to understand her true intentions. I asked her what was really going on. Amy explained that her apology during her visit was sincere, and she was truly trying to become a better person. She also mentioned that she had managed to get all the money she needed for the wedding on her own, so she no longer needed any financial help. Amy wanted me to know that her apology wasn't just to get on my good side, because I had money. She assured me that she truly meant every word she said that day. Amy went on to say that our parents played a big part in her realizing how she used to act. Their constant criticism made her see that she had been behaving badly in the past. Wanting to be different from them, she worked hard to change her behavior and become a better person. This personal growth was what motivated her to invite me to her wedding as a way to fix our broken relationship. Curious about what was happening in our family, I asked Amy if she was planning to invite our parents to her wedding too. She clarified that, despite what our parents were telling others, she had never officially uninvited them. She had just been really frustrated with them, 
which made things tense from the start. She had warned our parents that her wedding plans were very expensive and more than they could afford. But our parents were confident they could handle it, which turned out to be unrealistic. Amy explained that telling her future in-laws the truth about our parents' inability to contribute would have been embarrassing. Not only did our parents fail to keep their promises, but they also tried to compete with her in-laws, which added even more stress to the situation. This led to arguments, and eventually, our parents decided to uninvite themselves from the wedding. Amy never directly told them to stay away. They made that decision after her outbursts. What bothered me the most was that our parents chose to talk to everyone else about their problems instead of addressing them with us directly. This made them look hypocritical, complaining about their children without even trying to fix things within the family. Their actions made it hard for us to even consider making amends because they always found ways to blame us while making themselves look like the victims in every situation. Despite all the chaos, I was relieved to hear that Amy hadn't been pushed aside by the rest of the family like I had been. She was still deciding whether to invite our parents to her wedding because, even though they had treated me badly, they were still explaining themselves to her and showing a different side than they did with me. Amy's decision to change and offer an olive branch by inviting me to her wedding was a big step. It showed that she wanted to fix our relationship and move past the years of silence. Hearing her side of the story made me realize that maybe there's a chance for us to make up, even though our past is full of misunderstandings and hurt feelings. Thinking about everything that's happened, I understand that family relationships can be very complicated. Amy's efforts to apologize and invite me to her wedding show that she's trying to break away from the negative patterns our parents created. Even though the last five years have been tough, her actions give me hope that we can heal and rebuild our bond. As I think about her invitation, I'm reminded that forgiveness and understanding are key to moving forward. It won't be easy to get past years of tension and pain, but Amy's genuine attempt to make amends suggests that change is possible. Whether I decide to attend her wedding or not, this experience has taught me the importance of communication and being willing to give family another chance. In the end, Amy's visit and her wedding invitation have opened the door to possibly restoring our relationship. It's going to be a long journey, but taking the first step toward reconciliation is a positive move for both of us. Only time will tell how things unfold, but for now, I'm cautiously hopeful about fixing our broken sibling bond. I think my parents might be acting this way because they're too proud to apologize, yet not too proud to rely on their children in the future. Since my grandparents have stopped supporting them, they probably feel the need to keep Amy on their side. This might explain why they're treating her differently, but I'm not entirely sure what's really going on. It's sad to see how they're treating me now, especially compared to how they treat Amy. But at least she's starting to see the reality of the situation. If Amy is truly trying to become a better person, I'm willing to give her a chance. After we talked on the phone, Amy apologized for her outburst the other day and said she would be really happy if I could attend her wedding. She mentioned that having at least one family member there would mean a lot to her. I haven't decided yet if I'll go, but I'm giving myself a few days to think it over before I let her know. Rebuilding a relationship after four years isn't easy, but I don't want to be the type of person who holds onto grudges forever. Living that way would only make me miserable. I discussed this with my grandparents, and they told me that if I decide to attend the wedding, they'll come too. At first, they weren't sure if they wanted to go, but given everything that's happened, they're reconsidering. Amy seems to be rethinking her relationships with the rest of the family and might not even invite our parents. Yesterday, I went to Amy's wedding, or more accurately, I walked her down the aisle. Sadly, our parents never apologized or reached out to her before the wedding, so they weren't invited. She was really upset about it in the days leading up to the ceremony. She called me and asked if I would be willing to walk her down the aisle because she needed someone for emotional support. I agreed right away. No matter what had happened between us in the past, no one deserves to be treated like that by their own parents over a small disagreement. I always knew it would be easier for our parents to cut me off emotionally, since Amy was always the favorite. But seeing them refuse to fix their relationship with the one child who mattered most to them was a new low. Part of the reason Amy acted badly in the past was because our parents never corrected her behavior. As parents, it was their job to guide her. But they chose to let her do whatever she wanted, which turned her into a spoiled brat. 
I'm not saying it's entirely their fault, but they could have done something to prevent it. When Amy asked me to walk her down the aisle, she seemed genuinely thankful. Even the few family members she invited chose not to come to the wedding. It seems they all want to decide with our parents and be part of the drama. I was able to convince our grandparents to come to the wedding. Before the ceremony, Amy apologized to all of us, and her fiancé also apologized to me for how he had treated me years ago. Amy told me she had explained everything about her parents to him, and he reassured her not to worry about the costs he would handle everything. That's how they managed. Amy almost broke down before the ceremony because our parents weren't there, but her fiancé, our grandparents, and I all encouraged her not to let them ruin her special day. I won't say that everything is perfect now, but we're going to work on rebuilding our relationship. I'm willing to believe she has changed, and when I saw her yesterday, I felt she was sincere about wanting a fresh start. Some people might not agree with my decision, but I believe I'm doing the right thing.